So thanks for coming back to my design class for another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at how we can use symmetry in the brush tool to create all sorts of interesting shapes and patterns. Now, just before we begin, it's important to highlight that this technique is going to apply to not only the brush tool itself, but also the pen tool and also the eraser tool. So I will demonstrate those latter two in the later stages of this video. But for now, what we're going to be doing is first of all, creating a layer where we can actually use the brush tool on. So at the moment, I'm in Photoshop. I've just got a very, very simple background layer, which is a smart object and it's locked, so I can't edit it. So I'm going to create a new layer to start off with. And in order to do that, I can go to the bottom of the layers panel on the right hand side here and press on the small icon at the bottom, which is a small square with a plus symbol in it. And as you can see, when I press on that, we now have a new layer. So I can just double click on the name and rename it and then just press enter when I'm happy. Great. So we now got a layer that we can actually use. Now, the benefit of creating a new layer, even if you already have another layer open, is that you're never going to overwrite any of the work that you have on other layers. So next, let's find the brush tool. So the brush tool is on the left hand toolbar here. And as you can see, the shortcut to it is B. Now you might have it set to another tool. So if you just hold on the icon, you've also got the pencil tool, the color replacement tool and the mixer brush tool but you just want to make sure to start off with that you have the brush tool selected. So what we can now do is we can actually just go ahead and draw something on our canvas. So all you have to do is hold your left mouse button. And as you can see, you can make any sorts of shapes and just draw around your canvas. I'm just going to quickly undo that by pressing command and Z on my keyboard. That's control and Z for windows. So how do we actually create symmetry in our work? Well, it's very, very simple. As you can see at the moment, if I draw a line, there is no symmetry going on. It's not being replicated anywhere else in our image. So what we want to do is turn this feature on. So once again, I'm going to press command and Z to undo that. So what we have to do is we have to go to this panel at the top here, which gives us all the parameters for the brush tool. So for example, we can set the opacity, what kind of blending mode we want, the flow of the brush, the smoothing, etc., etc. But what we want is we want to go to the final icon in this panel. And this is a sort of butterfly shape that we have. So if you just press on that icon, as you can see, we get this drop down with all sorts of different options. So what we can do to start off with, let's start with the vertical one, which is the top one. And as you can see, it's now created this box shape and the line itself, the line of symmetry is the one going right through the center. So as you can see at the moment, it's in this sort of free transform mode, which means we can actually move and manipulate this line. So for example, I could increase it by just going to the edges there. So perhaps I wanted to span the entire height of my canvas. If I'm happy with this choice, I can just press on the tick at the top. And as you can see, a line is now appearing anytime I'm on the brush tool. If I go to a different tool, so for example, the selection tool, the line will disappear. But if I go back to the brush tool, for which the shortcut was B, which we learned earlier, as you can see, the line reappears. So this isn't something that we've actually created on our canvas. It's just a guide to show us where our content will be copied from. So hopefully you have some basic understanding of how symmetry works. But if I draw on this left hand side, as you can see, it's going to be replicated with the exact same size and distance from the line on the other side. Now, I don't have to stick to the left hand side. I could also draw on the right here. And as you can see, this is now going to be copied on the left. I could even go over the two and cross over and continue and create any sort of random shape that I want. And as you can see, this gives us a whole range of options for when we're designing. So for example, if I just quickly undo all of that, the icon itself is a butterfly. So a butterfly might look something like this. So we just have a very simple butterfly shape. And basically by using this technique, we can actually draw slightly more complicated shapes without actually having to draw it on both sides. The other advantage we got is everything is going to be the exact same proportion on the right as it is on the left. Now, one other important thing to note is if I quickly go to the selection tool by pressing V on my keyboard, both for Windows and Mac, the item we have actually drawn is one coherent shape. Just because we only drew it on the right doesn't mean that the bit on the left is not connected. And furthermore, now that the line of symmetry has disappeared, it's no longer being copied from that point. So it is just going to be one full object. And as you can see, I can do anything with the shape. I can go to the thumbnail, hold command or control if you're on Windows 
and press and the whole shape will be selected. I can press Command and T or Control and T for Windows in order to free transform my shape. So as you can see, it's just one full solid shape, which you can now basically do anything with. So I'm just going to quickly deselect that by pressing Command and D. And then going back to the brush tool in order to get our line of symmetry back. Now let's say we wanted a slightly different line of symmetry. I'm just going to quickly get rid of this drawing that we've made. We can actually do that by going to the eraser tool. So the eraser tool is just slightly under the brush tool. And as you can see, the shortcut to it is E. If you press on that, as you can see, the line of symmetry has stayed. So as you can see, all of the options are the same at the top here. And we also have the line of symmetry options. So this will actually also appear for the eraser tool. And as you can see, if I start to delete this content by just holding and dragging my left mouse key, as you can see, I can actually delete it and it will delete on both sides, which is very handy. So let's go back to the brush tool by pressing B on our keyboard. Let's go to the icon once again, and let's this time go for a wavy line. As you can see, the initial line that we had has now disappeared and it's once again in this free transform mode. So I might actually rotate it 90 degrees to the right and just holding shift will make sure that it will snap to those degrees. I might extend it on the sides to make sure it spans the entirety of our canvas. And then I might actually increase the height. Now in order to make sure it doesn't snap proportionally, I can just hold shift on my keyboard and as you can see, I can now scale it just going up and down. So I might just also reposition it to the center. If you can't see these purple guides, by the way, just press command and H or control and H on your keyboard and hopefully you should be able to see them. So I'm just going to press the tick once again, once I'm happy with that. Now this is going to work slightly differently. The same principles will apply. So anything I draw on this bottom side, it will be replicated at the top. The distance will be the same. Now one thing to point out with when you have a curve in a line of symmetry, anything that you draw on the inside of the curve is going to be exaggerated on the outside of the curve because it's got to cover a greater distance. So for example, if I draw a small line here, then as you can see, the shape that I've drawn on the outside is longer than the shape on the inside because it's got a greater distance to cover in order to get to the start and end points. So once again, just by having these curves in your line of symmetry just opens up many more doors so you can create all sorts of different and unique designs. So the next one we're going to cover, if I just quickly press Command and Z a few times, is if I go to the icon, let's go for radial. And as you can see here, what we get is a box that allows us to choose how many segments we want to include. So I'm going to stick with three to start off with and then press OK. I'm then going to scale it up ever so slightly, maybe recenter it ever so slightly too, and then press on the tick to confirm my choice. Now, as you can see, instead of having just one line, we now have three different lines, three segments that we have chosen to include. And what this basically means is if I draw on one side, it's going to be replicated on both of the other sides. So for example, making sure that we're on the brush tool, if I start drawing on the right here, as you can see, we're also going to get those curves in the bottom and on the left hand side. So for example, if I wanted to create three different arrows, which are all turning in the same direction, then I can just add these points on the end. And as you can see, this just saves us a whole load of time because I don't have to go ahead and duplicate my initial arrow. Instead, it's already been drawn in our lines of symmetry, making it much, much quicker for us to create. Now for the last option, what we're going to do is actually go to this other tab that I've already created as well. I'm going to quickly create a new layer. And what we're going to do for this final one is create a new line of symmetry, which is the mandala option. And as you can see, it once again asks us how many segments we want to include. So I'm going to press six this time. And then I'm going to quickly increase the size of this line of symmetry just to make sure we have the entire canvas included. And then pressing on the tick, I can confirm that option. I'm also going to make my brush ever so slightly larger just so we can see it slightly more clearly. So similarly to the last one that we had, we also have six different segments here. And this is basically where we can start creating all sorts of really cool patterns. So I can start in the center. And as you can see, anything that I could do is now being duplicated into a hexagonal pattern. 
And this is just a very, very quick way in which we can create all sorts of very interesting hexagonal patterns. And of course, you can extend this concept to any number of segments. So you could have as many as 20 or more in order to create the pattern that you are looking for. Now, if I just undo that and just create a small one, perhaps something like this. Now, just to finally cover, we did already have a look at how to use the eraser tool. But if we just press E on our keyboard to bring up the eraser tool, as you can see, it is going to cut using those lines of symmetry. So we can create all sorts of very interesting designs using that. And this also works on the pen tool. So where we were before with the brush tool, if we just hold our icon down and go to the pencil tool, which also has the shortcut B and just select that. As you can see, if I draw anywhere in our segment, it's now also going to be included in these lines of symmetry. So this is just a further way you can use the pen tool to create all sorts of interesting patterns. So that was how you can use lines of symmetry in the brush, eraser and pen tools to create all sorts of interesting patterns and shapes, which saves us a lot of time because we don't have to go ahead and duplicate our designs a load of times or have to be as precise because Photoshop is going to do all of the hard work for us. If you're new to the channel, we do have a playlist which is just purely dedicated to Photoshop tutorials. And remember to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed the content and to subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a My Design class video.